Before we move into what goes into the structure of a CV, let's first look at, on a high level, what recruiters or employers look out for during their CV screening process. When a recruiter picks up your CV, they need to instantly be engaged. To make a strong first impression, your CV should present a clear, concise and powerful summary of your skills, experiences and achievements, and also be tailored to a specific employment opportunity. As we have discussed in early episodes, when it comes to applying for a job, your CV is the first chance you will have to make a lasting first impression. This simple document will help you get your foot in the door, get an interview and inevitably help you land a job. In creating a list of warm contacts, the first area of focus will be conducting informational interviews. As a recent graduate or college student and back on a new career, it only makes sense that you talk to professionals within your field of study. Yet most students and graduates never do this. Instead, they put so much trust in the certifications they receive from school. When it comes to job hunting, the certification alone is not enough to secure you that job. One of the ways you can engage professionals within your field of study is through informational interviews. In today's job market, it can be challenging to get a professional reference. Some companies will even tell you that they don't offer references to former employees. But there are always ways to get references from those companies, even if your prospective employer is unwilling to provide them. For instance, you can check with co-workers. While they may not be in their supervisory or managerial role, they can still verify your length of employment and make a statement about your work ethics. Hi everyone, my name is Kwame Benny Smith and I want to specially welcome you to Season 2 of the Job Hands Recreation Series. In today's job market, employers look for prospective employees who are confident, motivated, hardworking and dedicated to their work. By understanding what an interview panel is looking for in a successful candidate, you will be increasing your chances of success dramatically. Before I go into any interview, I always try to put myself in the shoes of the interviewer. I ask myself these questions. What are they looking for in an employee? What are the key qualities required to perform the role? And what does the job description say? Once I have the answers to these questions, then I can start to prepare effectively for the interview. Season 2 of the Job Hands Preparation Series will focus on getting you ready for an interview. We will discuss how to prepare for an interview, how to predict interview questions, and how to respond to some of the general interview questions you are likely to meet in most interviews. So first and foremost, a quick brief introduction to myself. Very welcome to this presentation. As mentioned earlier, my name is Kwame Benny Smith. I'm an HR professional with over 10 years working experience, of which eight years have been in the field of HR analytics, recruitment and selection, manpower planning, organizational change, training and development, and general administration. I've spent many years in the field of staffing and sat on the panel of several interviews within different fields. I'm an interview coach and career guidance expert. I'm very passionate about helping people like you to achieve their potential and also hope at the end of this journey you gain all the necessary skills you need to excel in your next interview. So the first episode of season 2 will focus on how to prepare and predict interview questions. An interview is a formal meeting at which someone is asked questions in order to find out if they are suitable for a job or possesses the potential to perform in a role. Normally, Interviews are the first time an employer has in meeting a prospective employee. The employer would want to assess whether or not you have the qualities to perform the role competently. They also want to find out the experience that you have so far in a similar role, and also whether they like you as a person or whether you are likely to fit into their team's environment. Many interviews now will be structured around the fact that the interviewer will only assess you against your responses to the questions that are asked of you. For example, when I interviewed candidates for positions in the mining sector, there was always the perception of not taking into account what the interviewee was wearing. He or she could have turned up in jeans or trainers, and most often that wouldn't be taken into consideration when assessing the candidate's motivation for joining. Despite this, any person who turns up to a job interview in jeans or trainers, unless specifically requested to do so, doesn't deserve to get a job, and I'm sure most of you will be asking me why. I simply think it shows a lack of motivation and commitment for the job, even before they have started. A job interview is your opportunity to shine. It is your chance to show the employer that you are the person for the job, that you will do all that you can to perform above and beyond expectations if successful. Just by being at the interview, you should naturally be enthusiastic about the prospect of working for the company. Why be there if your heart is not in it? 
The psychological element of an interview is very, very important. Preparing emotionally for the interview is just as important as researching the company. Being in the right mindset will help you to perform at your best. There are many things that you can do to ensure you are in the right frame of mind, both immediately prior to the interview and in the weeks and days leading up to the interview. Some of these include matching the job description and all the person specification. Before you start preparing for the interview, you must get a copy of the job advert which contains the job description and also the person specification for the job you are applying for. In fact, this is in most cases. The vast majority of employers will assess you primarily against these important documents. Your first task is to try to think of areas where you match the job description and person specification. And based on that, you'll be able to identify the key elements of the role that you'll be interviewed on. This will go a long way in assisting you in predicting some, if not all, of the potential questions you might meet with at the interview. The next thing is your personal appearance. This carries far more weight than people think. First impressions are so important. It says a lot about who you are. Remember that you only get one opportunity to create a first impression. Unless it is specifically not required, you should always dress in proper business attire such as a suit and tie or equivalent if you're a female. Your shoes must be clean too. And if you need a haircut, then get it done a few days before. I always advise people to prepare the night before the interview and lay everything out pressed and ready for the morning, even down to your underwear, which sounds ridiculous. But it's all about limiting the stress that you will already be under on the day of your interview. The last thing you want to be doing is rushing around for your clothes or shoes on the big day. You can also talk about traveling to the interview. You need to ask yourself some of these questions when preparing for your interview. How are you going to get to the interview? Do you know the location of the venue of the interview and the departure time of the buses if you are to use a bus? These are all obvious questions, but important nonetheless. Again, like I said earlier, it is all down to preparation. Remember to take a contact number with you just in case you are going to be late for the interview. This will go a long way to help you. You can call them well in advance to tell them if you'll be late due to a breakdown or traffic congestion or whatever your reason may be should you be late. If you are traveling by car, don't wear your jacket. Hang it up on a coat hanger so that it does not get wrinkled when you arrive for the interview. You can always put it on at the venue of the interview. You also have to ensure to be punctual. This can be related to traveling to the interview, but it's still just as important. Make sure you leave with plenty of time to spare before your interview. It is far better to arrive an hour early than five minutes late. I usually arrive 30 minutes before my interview and sit in the car or the waiting area and reread the notes I've gathered for the rule or information about the company that I'm applying to join. Now let's move to the next area of discussion, which has to do with the interview format itself. Just by virtue of the fact that you have been offered an interview indicates that the employer believes you have the potential to work for them in a particular role. They would have already carried out a screening process based around the qualities and attributes relating to the position that you have applied for. The interview is designed so that the employer can see you in person and look at your demeanor, your presence, personality and appearance along with the opportunity to ask you questions based around your CV and the role that you are applying for. You may be competing against up to 30 applicants, so it is very important that you stand out in a positive way and not for the wrong reasons. The basics of interview antiquity are key to your success and you need to prepare for these as much as you do the interview questions themselves. Most interviews will follow the following format. It normally begins with an introduction and icebreaker. The interviewer would normally give you a brief overview of the interview and possibly the role that you are applying for. Dependent on the interview, you will be given the opportunity to tell the panel about yourself. Your response should be prepared beforehand and you can use this as an opportunity to sell yourself. You should cover brief topics relating to yourself your experience, your qualifications, outside interests and ambitions. If you tell the panel that in your spare time you are working towards a qualification that can relate to the role you are applying for, then this can only be a good thing. Try to keep your introduction as brief as possible and don't go over two minutes in length. After the introduction and icebreaker, the next section is the interview itself. This is the area in which you are asked a series of questions relating to your CV and the position that you've applied for. This is where you should do most of the talking. And if you are prepared well enough, you'll be able to answer most of the questions. Although it is not unusual to find yourself struggling to answer one or two of these questions. In this situation, it is always best not to blatter. If you really don't know the answer to a particular question, then just say so. No need to lie. At the interview, you also get an opportunity to ask questions. This is a time for you to ask some questions to the panel. You should usually have two or three questions that you want to ask at the end of the interview. 
I've seen a few people fail interviews at this final stage. I can remember one particular person applying for a role as an account officer. I was involved in interviewing him for the role and he had answered all of the questions near perfectly. At the end of the interview, I asked him whether he had any questions to ask the panel. And here's what he had to say. Yes, I do have one question. How have I performed? I personally think I've had a fantastic interview and will be very surprised if I failed. Is it possible to get feedback from you now, please? The above question should never have been asked. It displayed arrogance and it also pulls the interview panel in an uneasy situation. Make sure your questions are relevant but also avoid asking questions relating to leave or salary unless you are specifically asked to do so. Ask questions that are related to the role or development opportunities within the organization. You may have researched the organization and found that a new project is being developed. Ask them how the project is developing and what plans they have for the future. Don't ask questions where you are trying to be clever or questions that are too technical. If you try to catch them out, they won't be impressed and they might come back and ask you a similarly difficult question. So now let's take a look at some of the questions to ask when given the opportunity and a few of the ones never to ask. Examples of some of the questions to ask include, if I'm successful, how soon can I join the team? This question shows enthusiasm and motivation. Another question is, during my research, I noticed that you have just launched a new product. Has it been successful? This also shows a caring attitude towards the company and also that you have carried out your research. Another question can be, even though I don't know yet whether I have been successful at the interview, are there any books or literature I could read to find out more about the company and the role? This as well shows commitment. Now let's look at some of the questions to avoid asking. How have I done during the interview? Have I passed? This question demonstrates impatience and a slight level of arrogance. The interview panel will need time to discuss your performance before making their decision. Another question is, how much leave will I get in this role? I don't need to explain why this is a very bad question. You have not yet been offered the role and you are already looking for an opportunity to be away from work. Another question can be, how quickly can I progress through the company in terms of promotion? This question, while demonstrating a level of enthusiasm, shows the panel that you have little intentions of staying in the role for long. And probably the last question could be, I have a holiday booked in five weeks' time. If I'm successful, can I have the time off? You haven't even started and you're already asking for time off. Wait until you have started in the role before discussing your leave requirements. The last section of the interview is at the end of the interview. Make sure you remain positive at this stage and thank the entire panel for their time. This is a good opportunity to shake their hands. If you do shake their hand, then make sure it's a firm grip and look them in the eye. At the end of every interview, I always leave the panel with a final statement. Here's an example of what I will say. I just want to say thank you for inviting me along to this interview. I've really enjoyed the experience and I've learned a tremendous amount about your company and the role. If I am successful, then I promise you that I'll work very hard in the role and I'll do all that I can to surpass my expectation. This statement is very powerful. This is the final thing the interview panel will remember you for. When you leave the interview room, you are probably going to assess or discuss your performance. Just as first impressions last, so do final impressions also. Now, this brings us to the end of the first and introductory episode of Season 2 of the Job Hunt Operation series. In our next episode, We'll be discussing into detail how to address the question, introduce yourself to the panel. If you need access to my ebook, Ultimate Guide to Job Hunting, which will expose you to expert tips and secrets to landing a great job, then reach out by calling the number on your screen. This contact can also be found at the description section of the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel because I'll be sharing videos with a lot of expert tips every week and remember to share your comments below. Thank you very much for watching and I wish you all the very best in your pursuits to pass in your interview. See you in the next video.